A while ago I have created a simple game where you drive around a simple village and put out fires. Quite a lot of people have asked me how I have created the direction indicators. So here's a small tutorial. Hello fantastic people, this is PT and let's get straight to it. We starting with this very simple scene. We have a character and some props. To do not waste your time, the character can already move. But if you would like to learn how to make this type of movement, you can check my previous tutorial. First, we create an empty object that will be a child of our character. Then, inside of it, we drop the sprite we want to use as our indicator. We need to position it, scale it and rotate to be in the correct position. Make sure you are moving the actual indicator, not the root we created a moment ago. The whole idea is very simple. You see, when I change the Y rotation of the root, the indicator starts showing different directions. And this is exactly what we'll be doing using script. But first, we want to ensure that the indicator will be always visible. We wouldn't like it to hide under the floor or behind a bush. First step is to create a new camera. I like to make it child of the main camera, because then if the main camera moves, this one moves with it. Then we change its render type to overlay. This will allow us to render whatever this camera sees on top of everything that has been rendered by the main camera. We control what each camera draws by using layers. So now we need a new layer for our indicator. Now we need to ensure that the overlay camera draws only the indicators. We do that by setting the right layer on the cooling mask setting. Now on the main camera we can actually disable the indicators. And most importantly, in the stack section, we need to add our overlay camera. Now we only need to make sure that our indicator is in the right layer. Let's see how it looks like. Fantastic! The arrow is drawn on top of all the props, this is exactly what we wanted. Now let's make it point in the right direction. Let's make a new script and call it Direction Indicator. Let's create a serialized field for a transform that we'll be pointing at. Now in the update method we could simply use transform.lookAtTarget. But in this implementation we'll go a step further. We'll ensure that the arrow stays flat even if the target is at a different height. So first we want to store the target's position. Then we change its Y component to the transform.positionY. And then finally we use the target position in the lookAt method. Now of course we need to add the script to our indicator and make sure you are assigning it to the root, not to the actual sprite. And let's set the target to something in the scene. For example, this chest. Yay, everything works as expected. But in the example I have shown you at the very beginning, I was also showing the distance. Let's implement it now. First, as a child of the indicator sprite, let's add the text mesh pro text. If we focus on it, we'll see it's massive. And it's of course in the wrong place. First, we need to ensure that the render mode of the canvas is changed from screen space overlay to world space. Then, there are different ways of adjusting the size, but I think the easiest one will be to adjust the scale. So now I'm just adjusting position, rotation and scaling. I change the text to 00M, make it bold and make sure it's centered. Let's go back to our indicator script. To easily control the distance unit size, we can create a new field. Then let's create a new method show distance. And actually, while we're doing that, let's also extract the code we already written to a new method. That will be a little bit nicer. In the show distance, we want to simply calculate the distance between the transform of the target and the position of the indicator. And then, of course, we want to set the text on the right object. But for that, we'll need another field. 
Then when we set the text, we simply round it to the integer and add m at the end. And of course, in the update method, we need to call our new code. Now in the editor, we need to set the reference to the text mesh pro object and set the distance multiplier to something larger than zero. To make sure the distance text is always on the top, let's move the whole canvas to the correct layer. Fantastic! If you would like the values to change slightly quicker, you can make the distance multiplier something larger than one, for example, four. And we are done. I hope you learned something interesting. Have a fantastic day. Love you and bye bye.